One of my main gripes with Quake's ending is that after killing the boss, you're always shown holding the axe, even if you entered the slipgate holding a gun. It's been bothering me for nearly 25 years, and yet in that time, it never occurred to me that the reason he's holding the axe is because he had to hack his way out from the inside. Luckily, comments exist, and they allowed people to school me on this matter, as well as call me a terrible programmer and just generally be a bit weird. Armed with this new understanding, I'm now going to have another go at fixing Quake's ending, and this time my goal is to make it more obvious that you're hacking your way out from the inside using the axe. No time limits this time, and I've finally figured out a way to compile and run Quake C on my Mac, which means I don't have to dig out the Windows 98 PC to do this. And if you've seen my video on how I capture content from my Windows 98 PC, you'll understand why that's such a relief. Before I start, I just want to get one thing out of the way. The final boss's name contains a word that sounds dangerously close to a slur, so I'm not going to be using the full name for fear the algorithm will misunderstand me and start recommending my videos to arseholes. Or worse still, demonetize me. Wouldn't want to miss out on that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Starting with the code from last time, a lot of people pointed out the mistake I made here, where I'm resetting the frame at the beginning of each cycle and immediately incrementing it so the first frame doesn't actually get displayed. It's quite an easy fix, I've since learned quite a bit more about how Quake C works. All methods are global. This means I didn't need to borrow code from the player stand method, I can just use the player stand method as it's available in this file. The only change I need to make is to make sure the stand-in model has the same weapon as the actual player. So that's basically given me what I was going for in that first video, and all in just a few lines of code. So the goal here is to make it really obvious that the player is hacking his way out of the inside of Shub, and I figured the best way to do that is have it so when Shub explodes, have the player midway through an axe swing animation. And I found through a bit of experimentation that starting on the third frame of the axe swing is the best for that. I've also discovered I don't need to quit out and reload Quake to see my changes. I just recompile down into a progs file, and that file will be reinterpreted when I reload my saved game. I think that's already a pretty good result, but there's things I can do a lot better. Because I'm not rushing to a stupid self-imposed time limit this time, I'm going to try and do it a little bit neater, Part of that is to grab all of the code that relates to this player stand-in and put it in its own player stand-in file and then add that to the progs.source file and that should keep things a bit more contained and stop polluting this old one file. The next thing I wanted to do was show visually each attack that's happening from the inside of Shub. So with each axe swing I want to show some kind of blood effect. And I also want these attacks to get faster and faster as the effect goes on. The way I've achieved the damage effect is I've kind of drawn an imaginary square over the top of Shub, and then I randomly choose one of four attack types, those being top to bottom, bottom to top, left to right, or right to left. And then once I've got my direction, I choose a start and end point from the edges of that square. So for example, on an attack that goes left to right, I choose a random point on the left hand side of the square, and then a random point on the right hand side of the square. I interpolate points between that start and end and add a blood effect onto all of those points but each one is slightly delayed from the previous and the end result is it looks like the axe is sweeping across and leaving blood trails. I've also added a random chance of a jib popping out just for that little bit of extra effect. Uh, I think this works really well. The final piece of the puzzle is sound. We've got these axe swings that you can see, but I also want to hear them. So I spent a good bit of time listening to every single sound file in Quake to find some nice kind of fleshy hits and also some axe swingy sounds. I found three of each type that I liked, although one of the fleshy hits is actually two combined. And then I choose randomly one swing sound, one hit sound from the three. It gives you nine total combinations of sounds that accompanies each swing. And I think that really makes it. And when I put it all together, it looks and sounds like this.
I don't know about you, but I'm really happy with this. I think it's awesome. For me, that is the ending Quake should have had. I'm so happy with the result. It turned out way better than I expected. So thank you to everyone that suggested it. Another comment that was quite common was people saying that they thought the standing on one leg pose was chosen because it gave a better view of the axe head, whereas the two leg pose that I had in my fix, the axe looked more like a stick. It is a good point. I did try playing around with the camera angles, but I couldn't find anything that looked any better. I actually think it doesn't matter anymore because you now see that final axe swing, you know it's an axe, even though it looks like a stick on the final pose. If you want to have a play around with this yourself, all the source code and the compiled mod are available on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description. My next video is going to be nothing to do with Quake. I'm actually going to be introducing my latest acquisition of Big Beige Boxiness. It's a new retro PC, this one from the late 80s. 10 internet points to the first person who can guess it from this picture.